What's up, everybody? My name is Darren B-Side Young. I'm the Director of Business Development for DOS Audio here at our wonderful South Florida headquarters in Miami, Florida. And today, we're gonna let you know about the DSP-226. The DSP-226 is a very portable DSP management system that allows you to connect for bands, DJs, rental companies, or even in installations, your audio management system for any PA, active or passive. The DSP itself has a USB interface, the LCD screen with the main menu controls with the encoder. You have your input and your output level indicators along with the mute buttons of those level inputs and outputs at the bottom. If you go around to the back of the unit, you're able to see your power switch and your connection along with an RS-485 in and out, along with your six outputs that are XLR connections and your two inputs, which are XLR as well. So some of the key features of this DSP-226, you have two in, six out. It is a high res audio management system. So it's 24-bit 48K DSP. You get high performance AD to DA converters, and it allows you a very simplistic way of managing your entire audio system. It is a dual voltage with low energy consumption, so it ranges from 90 all the way up to 240 volts. Taking it anywhere in the world is not a problem. It's a very friendly, very intuitive, an easy to use interface either directly off the unit or better yet when you connect it with your computer via USB or RS-485 connections. Currently it is only PC based version, but Mac should be coming out soon. We're gonna take you through some of the home screens and some of the main screen settings for the DSP-226. The main screen here shows you the basic settings for all your inputs and outputs, and it includes a flow chart indicating input A versus input B and where they are designated for the individual outputs. From this screen, you'll be able to see everything that's going on from what's muted to the actual gain levels, the delay, the parametric EQ, and even the compression. The gain screen, allows you to see in a standard mix management system where you have faders with solo or mute buttons underneath. You're able to mute individual channels and increase or decrease the levels. You can go all the way from a negative 40 dB plus 12 dB in increments of 0.1 dB settings. Your next screen is gonna be your delay. Here you're allowed to adjust your measurements in either increments of milliseconds, meters, or feet. You have the ability to adjust the delay all the way up to a thousand milliseconds. That's over 3,000 feet of delay. That's either on the inputs or the individual outputs with your delay settings. When we get into hands-on of the unit, I'll explain to why the delay is so important. Next is your parametric EQ. You have a seven band parametric EQ for each input and output. And each PEQ band has multiple eligible EQ settings. Up next is going to be the compressor. You have a compressor on the input or the output as well. And you can adjust the threshold, the ratio, the attack, the release time, the close, even you can adjust your knees with a five-step soft knee process or even a hard knee. And then last but not least is going to be your setting screen. This is where you're able to go in and see all of the presets that are already loaded into the processor. We have a host of factory presets pre-installed so you can easily match whatever audio configuration that you have from DOS Audio or you can even use some of the basic ones and use with other equipment. On your settings screen here, you're able to see your device information, 
You can even go in and check the connectivity of the DSP itself. You can set the lock with or without a password. And you have other easy measurements of copying and pasting links or even adjusting your logo. To the right hand side, you have what's called the program manager. That is where you will get all of the user presets that are either pre-installed or you can do preset configurations of either two-way or three-way or multiple different crossover band configurations. And this is just showing you all of the presets that are automatically pre-installed. You have the ability to save all of this data to your own computer. You can either override or erase or modify these settings and rename them on the fly on your device as well as your computer. And by device, I mean the processor itself. So why would you need a DSP and where would you use a DSP? Well, just a simple example, you've got a bar or a lounge. You have a few different audio needs. Sometimes during the week they've got bands or they've got DJs. Sometimes it's just a karaoke night or perhaps you're just playing music directly from your computer. You want a well-distributed, managed, user-friendly system, and that's where the DSP comes in. It allows you to connect multiple speakers, whether it's subs, tops, input devices such as computers, DJ equipment, mixing equipment, whatever your audio source is, you connect XLR into your inputs, and then you're able to mute and unmute or select the outputs that you wanna use. So in some cases, you may have a daytime setting or an evening setting, or you may have two different systems operating simultaneously or separately in the same environment. With the mute and unmute settings, you have the ability to go to those groups or channels of the outputs and select those individually or in groups. You can actually even connect multiple processors together and use them independently, individually at different times, not simultaneously. For a touring example, you have the ability to go in and do a left and right hang for a line array, for example, and then you have left and right for your subs if you wanted to do that in stereo, or you could even do a mono configuration. Here, you would easily be able to connect your subs and your tops on your output channels and that's where you would actually mute and unmute them as you need, group them however you wish, and apply the different EQ settings, the parameters, your safety measures such as your compression, and your crossover points, and even more. If you were going to connect with Ethernet cable, you can connect from one RS-485 out to the input of another processor, and so on. You have a maximum of 32 devices that you can actually link together. But remember, you're only gonna control and access one device live at a time. So before we get into the hands-on part, let me explain to you why the processor is so important. It is your brain and lifeline to managing your audio system. How many times you've been in an environment where someone drops a microphone, trips over a cable, unplugs something accidentally, you get feedback, you get RF interference or other frequency interference that could disrupt or destroy your audio system. Your audio system is too large of an investment, whether it's a big PA or a small system, for you to sacrifice it to someone else's error. When you have a DSP, you have another layer of security and another way of measuring not only everything that's going on in the system, it allows you to fine tune your system and get the best out of it. You get more headroom, less risk, more reliability, more clarity, and more control when you're using a DSP, which is your digital signal processor. Typically, they come in configurations of two in, six out, as we have here, they even have some that are four in and eight out. If you're looking for a high performance, high end processor, make sure you check out the DSP 4080 
or the DSP 2060. You can find out more about the processors we have available, including the DSP 226 shown here with dosaudio.com. That's www.dosaudio.com. If you're wondering what this is, I've got the DSP 226 here already installed in a pre-configured rolling rack bag. So if you want to find out more, make sure you check out the video on the DOS DSP rack bag.